really our students, our students in school too. So what we are trying to do through that to do in that in the increase is we look at data, specific ways at the district level, we look at specific ways at the school level, we look at specific ways at the grade level, and then we look at it specific ways when we get down to the more than the student level challenging students. Um, so there's another handout, but I'll, I'll save that. I'll save that right now. So we're still on this one. Uh, our initial initial training was October 13th. We had tremendous help from our literacy um, uh, facilitators, our literacy coaches, Tim Henderson, Chelsea Walker, did an amazing job. So we had them come in, we sat on trail staff, and we looked and analyzed data the same way we did in our district. Benchmark Mark with Mr. Craver, uh, Mr. Derby. I mean, so we looked at that the same way we looked at it as the district. I thought it was only fair and only right that we're going to look at uh, data this way in the district staff and how we're going to analyze it in the district so they can analyze the same place. So um, we did that initial training and then I put into place kind of a progress monitoring template, kind of a procedure for us to be able to monitor how our students are doing based on the intense instruction we're giving these specific students. So um, if you look at this document here, it just goes along with this one. This is the document that when we had our benchmark meetings, we sat down as a staff and we said, we are going to do our good. We are going to specifically target specific students so we can have them reach the goal of moving above the 40 percentile on each one. So we sat down as a staff and said, yep, that's what we're going to do. We need to meet our goals. So then I met with each individual teacher and we said, all right, what students are you going to target? So we looked through all of our data and we said, you know, here's some students right on the cusp. There's some students that may need a little bit extra. We're going to target both of those types of kids. Um, so by targeting those, it means that we are going to give them specific intervention and we're going to specifically progress monitor that intervention. So we chose, oh, two to three to four kids per teacher that we were going to target. We were focusing on all kids, of course, but we really wanted to target those specific kids. So we use this template kind of as a uh, guide for us. So if you look at it, it says, what evidence-based materials are we going to use to provide this specific intervention for the present students? It's really important that it's evidence-based. It falls right in the scope of the sequence, especially by literacy instruction, especially around bond and standard awareness with our own stuff. So, what are you going to use? And then what are we going to specifically target? So as a principal and as a teacher, I know I'm not, I'm not just going to teach phonics. I'm specifically going to target specific skills. So they went through that and then we said, okay, what intervention are you going to use? What evidence-based intervention? Is it going to be famous awareness? Is it going to be OG? Is it going to be integrity? Is it going to be any of those uh, that we've used in the district? Um, I said, how long are you going to use it? How are we going to monitor it? And how frequently are we going to look at it? So teachers went through this. I'm going to start it tomorrow. We're going to we're going to look at it in four weeks. I'm going to progress monitor it. So every four weeks, I would sit down with that teacher and look over the progress monitoring data to be able to see how their kid is moving or if their kid is not. Moving. Um, so then, once we did that, we say, are we making adequate progress? We're going to continue. The answer was yes. We continue the intervention. But if we weren't making adequate adequate progress, and we need to adjust something. We looked at the Programming, the intensity, or the grouping that that student was in, and if we had to make a change, we mark that on our progress monitoring. So everything after that, we really made a change in the intervention. So it just helped us like really get down to I made mean, one specific change, and I want to monitor that change. I mean, I had to make another change, and I want to monitor that change. Um, so this is just a piece that we are doing um, to meet our district goals. It's really important to us to be at this first semester, and we are working on our projects to be in the second semester. Um, third document here uh, this is our Go to the County Literacy Control System. And just kind of give you an overview of that if you haven't seen this before. This is kind of how the whole data picture, district wide, down to the building level, down to the student level, kind of set up. So we have our fall screeners, our winter screeners, and our spring screeners. Those are our A's with our star. Our opinion um, awareness uh, screeners, those are our phonics screeners. Um, so we look at that as the district. We sit down with Mr. Kramer, Mr. Derby, the literacy coaches, the principals. We all sit down and we analyze our whole school data. And then we go through each individual classroom, each individual teacher to see what areas of improvement do we need, do we need the right support, do we need the right coaching. What does this particular teacher need to grow the most 
effectively. So then if you look at the school benchmark meetings, that's where I take that same process to the school level. We sit down as a whole school and we just start up the trail. Hey guys, here's where we're at. Here's the areas as a whole school that we may be low in or that we need to be improving on or we need to keep up. Here's the areas where we're strong. From there, that's where that school PLC is this progress monitoring comes in. It's where we look to each, I can each individual teacher and look at their specific kids. Where, where are they falling short? Where are their strengths? Where are their weaknesses? Where do we need to keep up instruction or continue to be? Uh, and then school SST is when that isn't enough, and we go our school level student success teams where we need all the brains, all the brains in the room, and we're going to put them up with more detail at the end of the day. So, just a quick snapshot of what we're doing to try to meet our district goal that's aligned with our state. Is there any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we will move down to the public forums portion of our meeting. Um, please remember there's a five minute time limit, and also I want to use, um, remind everybody that speaking tonight, board members or public, um, make sure you speak into the micro microphones and um, so that the people watching online can hear you. So um, we'll start with Tony Goulart. That you can work to the side on the How about that? Okay. Well, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and Secretary, or Superintendent Kramer, thank you again for your time and for this opportunity. I hate to come before you this unprepared, but I didn't know until I was literally on the way here that Franklin Covey was, was on the agenda. Um, so I'll be brief. Um, I would just like to ask you to consider this very charitable. Um, it's kind of like how many licks does it take to get to the center of the 50 bar? We don't have any clicks. Take two clicks and get a bleeding eye. Uh, I'll just very briefly read this. To, this is uh, their own description on their page to foster inclusivity. Every person must understand their own unconscious biases. The reason why China is not woke today is because they already went through this. They call them struggle sessions. Uh, you can watch some of the documentaries of when China was woke, went to university students and high school students standing, holding Mao's little red book, waving it like this. And they went through that. They, they did this. Um, and then ultimately became what we know them to be today. This is a conspiracy theory. Uh, this is documented history. You can see it all for yourselves. This is what we're inviting when we play with BDI that has been a failure everywhere it's been tried, whether it's our military academies, whether it's our military itself, and the effect it's had on, on a negative effect it's had on the readiness of our units, uh, to every other place where it's been tried, the private industry has been a other thing. I wish I was more prepared to go into the detail. Unfortunately, I'm not, but I apologize for that. Um, but all I would ask is please don't make a decision on it unless you're confident that this is really something that you think would bring value. And I think if you were to look into it, you'd find it probably it won't. Um, and I, I would just have to imagine that somewhere out there, there's a program that would accomplish the same goals that you have in mind for this program that doesn't include Marxism. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Jessica Hooper. Can I share more information? I'm not sure I fully understand quite yet. I'll put you at the bottom. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Rebecca Cohen. <clears throat> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board. The first thing I would like to address is the school calendar. Um, if you will notice, most of the Fridays are in red, which means that there will be no intervention. Only one, exactly one Friday per month is intervention, um, which is very surprising as one, the selling points of this was that we would have multiple intervention for the good of the students. Um, it can also be noticed that because there is no uh, intervention on Fridays, we certainly won't need cooks and bus drivers. 
which uh, we were assured, they were assured that their hours would be fulfilled when uh, they agreed to go to the uh, intervention Fridays, the no, no school Fridays. Uh, there were uh, many uh, employees that were um, told that they would receive their hours. I would also like to address item G on the agenda, the, the Franklin Covey. I um, had only very slightly more time to prepare than um, Mr. Gulak did. I did look up to them. They do have DEI all over their website. It does say uh, to foster inclusivity to and to get rid of unconscious biases. Um, in several places on their website, and in fact, when you pull up some of it, it has DEI right on the front page. They're not trying to hide it. Now, uh, DEI is supposed to stand for diversity, equity, and inclusion, but when implemented, what follows is division, exclusion, and intolerance, because you must put everyone into a category. And when you begin categorizing people, you create division because we have to start looking at people in a way that we are not, we were, have not been brought up to in this country. The state of Wyoming has voted overwhelmingly no against DEI. In the latest session, it, um, funding for the Wyoming, University of Wyoming DEI project has, was cut. The, the state legislature did it. The people that sent them there asked them to vote to cut the DEI funding for the University of Wyoming. Parents across the country have stood up to school board meetings and libraries and every other instance and said no to DEI. In Wyoming, parents in Rock River stood up against their school administration and said, we will not tolerate this. Less than six months ago, parents in this court, in this boardroom said, this is bad. This is not what we want for our children. And thankfully, you voted against it that time. I would hope that you would vote against it this time. If, at the very least, you could postpone the vote until you can do your own research. Please don't take our word for it. Go do your own research. You'll find it too. All you have to do is, is put it in your favorite search engine, whether it's Google or DuckDuckGo, it doesn't matter. It comes up the same. There's DEI all over. Now, I understand the reason for this is for uh, district development, leadership training, and, and the source, and, and things like that, which I think is a good thing. However, there must be a company that provides that without the DEI influence. Because again, after DEI is implemented in its fullest extent, it is, does not stand for diversity, equity, inclusion. But serious division among the people, among the races, among parents and staff, parents and their children. Please at least vote to postpone the vote. Thank you. Thank you. Monica Anderson. Good evening. Um, I've served in the district for 13 years as a teacher and a coach. And in these capacities, I've seen the need for students from elementary to high school to be taught life habits and skills that will carry over into their lives, not just the students but as productive members and leaders within their families, their communities, and society as a whole. Like many people in our community, I am concerned with what our children are being taught and even exposed to. As a teacher of Leader in Me and a co-facilitator of the Southeast Elementary Lighthouse team, I'm confident that there is nothing within the curriculum that would expose students to anything other than strong habits of mind. I would like to specifically address the concerns that have been raised regarding the DEI that has been found on the company website. First, I'd like to challenge the board to find a single company in today's society that does not have a DEI posted. A quick Google search in preparation for tonight led me to DEIs from every major company that I could think of, such as Harley-Davidson, Toyota, Chevy, Ford, Procter & Gamble, Pepsi, 
Capital One, MasterCard, Walmart, Target, Colgate, and Hershey. Even companies such as Hobby Lobby and Chick-fil-A have posted DEIs on their website. In fact, Goshen County School District posted a non-discrimination statement to show that we value people of all race, sex, religion, national origin, and disability as staff members and students. Therefore, I'd like to put the question to those opposing Leader and me, on the basis of a posted DEI, do you choose to not do business with the companies I mentioned solely because those companies have a posted statement of diversity, equity, and inclusion on their websites? Next, the mission of the Ocean County School District states our commitment is to prepare each student to become a career and college ready citizen. It also says we will partner with families and communities to provide an engaging and challenging education in a safe and positive environment. The eight habits taught in the Leader in Me program are essential to preparing each student to meet this mission. Habits like be proactive, teach students to take responsibility and initiative for their own actions and attitudes. Begin with the end in mind, teach the students to set goals, do meaningful work, and think about how choices they make will impact their futures. Putting first things first, teaches students to prioritize tasks, be organized, focus, and minimize distractions. Think win-win, teaches students to look for solutions to problems. Consider the feelings and needs of others and to be kind to all. Seek first to understand and then to be understood, teaches students to actively listen to others to understand without interrupting and making assumptions. Synergize teaches students that more can be accomplished when everyone on a team is valued for their strengths and ideas. Sharpen the saw teaches students the importance of taking care of themselves with exercise, resting, and eating healthy while balancing work and time with family and friends. Finding your voice and inspiring others to find theirs shows students that we all have strengths and things we are passionate about that lead us to help others and make our communities and world a better place. I assert that there is nothing in these eight habits that is offensive or controversial. In fact, the search of the leader in these site for trigger words such as sexual orientation and gender identity led me to one article, and that is the DEI. When I searched diversity and identity, I found one lesson on the junior high high school curriculum inviting students to listen empathetically and seek diverse perspectives to avoid stereotypes. Therefore, I firmly stand by the positions that these habits will prepare and propel the students of Goshen County to be the leaders in their schools, communities, and world that they live in by equipping them with the habits needed to advocate for themselves, work cooperatively with others, set and achieve goals, and be the problem solvers and bridge builders that our society desperately needs. In closing, I'd like the board to know what my sixth grade students say about the learning me. All 19 of my students present in class today affirmed the value of the program. 17 of the 19 wrote statements to express the value they found in the program. I'd like to highlight just a few of them. I think Leader in Me is valuable because it teaches us students to be kind and proactive to help be a get a better community and life. I think Leader in Me is important because it teaches me how to act right and be a leader for the other kids. It also teaches me to be a better person for my community. Leader in Me is useful because it has helped me and a lot of other students. It has helped me to be a better leader and a better friend. When I get stuck or start to think badly of myself, I try to have a better mindset about what I was saying or doing. I urge you to listen to my students who have experienced the lessons within Leader in Me. I ask you to vote to approve and accept the grant to fund the Leader in Me program district-wide so that every student in Goshen County is given the opportunity to equip themselves with the habits of leadership that will positively impact their future within the walls of not only our school buildings, but on whatever path they choose in life. Thank you. Jessica Hook. Thank you for allowing me to go last, um, because much like the other ones that spoke, uh, I didn't, I'm not prepared, <laughs> and I didn't understand what the issue really was, so I wanted to hear what other people were saying about it before I offered up my thoughts. Um, having read the 
highly or the seven habits of highly effective people, and then the seven habits of highly effective teams that is that came after it. Also, after looking through the website and using materials from the website as part of the leader and lead curriculum um, in two of my different classes right now, um, I have the ability to choose what the students see and what they don't see. So the one um, lesson that Monica was referring to, we have a choice to never even let our students see that because we don't feel that that's applicable to the students that are sitting in our classrooms. Um, and I didn't even realize that the DPI thing was such a big deal until today. <laughs> um, now that doesn't mean that I wasn't aware of DPI and the whole idea behind it. Um, I echo what Monica said about there are numerous companies out there that we do business with every single day that have it on their website. Um, and I think it's kind of a CYA at this point in time, whether we like it or not. Um, and I don't agree with it, but knowing what the seven habits of highly effective people and teams are and having read the book and gone through the curriculum, um, I can say that it doesn't preach those things. It doesn't show to the students that that's what we're trying to indoctrinate them with at all. Um, it is simply, these are seven habits that regardless of your walk of life, your education, where you choose to go in your life, these are habits that you can use for the rest of your life. That, um, much like Monica, I urge you guys to read the books, um, look at other things within besides the one DEI statement, and actually see if these were are our habit statements. You think are worthwhile for your children to learn. Um, so maybe perhaps much like what a previous person stated, do some more research before you go done. Um, because obviously I was coming in with very less intention. <laughs> Much like Monica, that they're great tools for our students to learn that regardless of where they go after Goshen County School District, they're going to be more prepared and more successful to handle the vast array of things that get shoved at them from all directions. Thank you. Okay, letter E, recommended actions. Number one is the consent agenda. Are there any items on the consent agenda that any board member wishes to pull this evening? Okay. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda presented this evening, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Item carries. Number two, old business. Uh, letter A is consider approval of proposed policy revision on second and final reading. The recommendation is to approve the proposed revision to district policy 1700. Tobacco and smoking is presented on second and final reading. Do I have a motion? Hello? Is there a second? Right. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the policy revision to district policy 1700, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Item carries. Letter B, consider approval of proposed pol policy revision on second final reading. The recommendation is to approve the proposed revision to district policy 3643 slash 5151.1 unpaid student meal debt as presented on second and final reading. Do I have a motion? Is there a second? Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the proposed revision to district policy 3643 slash 5151.1, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? I didn't hear this. Letter C, consider approval of proposed uh, policy revision on second final reading. The recommendation is to approve, approve the proposed revision of district policy 5113.5, students withdrawing from school, is presented on second final reading. Do I have a motion? Um, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the revision to district policy 5113.5, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Item carries. <laughs> Letter D, consider approval of proposed policy revision on second final reading. 
The recommendation is to approve the proposed revision of district policy 3420 purchasing presented on second final reading. Do I have a motion? Is there a second? Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the revision to District Policy 3420, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Item carries. Uh, number three, new business. Letter A is to consider approval of 2024-2025 school calendar. Um, do I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Superintendent Kramer, will there be any changes to the gold sheet hours for our staff? So gold sheets will be re our recommendation or the administration's recommendation to maintain gold sheet hours from this year, unless it's mutually agreed upon that certain staff members would prefer not to work on Fridays. We would try to accommodate that. There may be situations, though, due to the number of students, that we would still require uh, those staff members to work Fridays if needed to oversee students. But we try to accommodate in any way, but we do not have a plan to reduce uh, gold sheet hours uh, of staff that are currently employed in their current hours of work for the school year. Okay, thank you. And then in regards to the intervention piece, I know there was a great deal of discussion about that. Could you maybe shed a little light on that for us to help? Yes, in review of the uh, survey and information regarding that, there was the interpretation in the survey that consistency on the Fridays was extremely important. And so what we tried to do uh, was make those as consistent as possible in the time of month that we have them. So you'll notice that the third, typically it's the third Friday of each month. Um, you'll also notice in the narrative that we are moving from eight to 10 with certified staff to eight to noon with certified staff. Uh, so there are twice the amount of time that we currently had and you'll notice also in there that the workday for staff is increasing from an eight hour day uh, to an 8.25 hour day on those other four days of the week. So there will be longer gaps between interventions, but the same amount of intervention. Correct. And then also at the high school level, all three schools are, are actually including then um, what we refer to as a flex time on a daily basis to allow for teachers to actually flex students who they are needing to see for intervention time on a daily basis in addition to the three days uh, or the, the intervention days. What we also want to see is uh, opportunities for extension on those Fridays too, uh, which also because of the extended amount of time, because it's four hours, might also open up opportunities to not uh, be within the school building and open up some opportunities for field trips too and extension opportunities that might take place. Fantastic, thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor of approving the 2024-2025 school year calendar as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Item carries. I just want to thank the committee members of that. Uh, we met uh, for an hour and a half uh, for, I believe there ended up being 10 meetings uh, total uh, to create this calendar. And as Trustee Cushman can attest to, they, they we, we heard a lot of thoughts and ideas, and I, I think that many of those thoughts and ideas went into the building of this calendar. So I, wanna, I really appreciate the, the work of those committee members. Okay, letter B. Consider acceptance of resignation submitted by certified staff. Uh, the recommendation is to accept the resignation submitted by Lincoln Elementary first grade teacher, Olivia Neal, by Torrington Middle School Technology Education teacher, Walt Smith, and by Lingleport Laramie High School Special Education teacher Arlo Lomo, effective at the end of the 23-24 school year. Do I have a motion? Is there a second? Sure. Any discussion? All those in favor of accepting resignations submitted by Olivia Neal, Walt Smith, and Arlo Palomo, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Any abstentions? Item carries. Letter C, consider approval of offering teaching contracts, renewal of initial contract teachers, and annual employment agreements for the 2024-2025 school year. 
The recommendation is to approve offering teaching contracts and renewal of annual employment agreements for the 2024-2025 school year. Do I have a motion? No. Is there a second? Second. We need a second. All those in favor of approved offering teaching contracts and renewal of annual employment agreements for the 24-25 school year, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Any abstentions? Item carries. Letter D, consider approval of offering certified teaching contracts for the 2024-2025 school year. The recommendation is to approve offering teaching contracts to Scott James as a science teacher at Torrington High School, to Stacy Polkowski as a special education teacher at Torrington High School, to Diana Pitchy as a music teacher at Lincoln Elementary, pending Wyoming teacher certification, and to Whitney Pitchy uh, for, at Trail Elementary for the 2024-2025 school year. Ending Wyoming certification. Do I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Any discussion? All those in favor of approving offering teaching contracts to Scott James, Stacy Polkowski, Diana Pitchy, and uh, Whitney Pitchy, please signify by saying aye. Aye. <laughs> Any opposed? Okay, item carries. Um, now, letter E, consider approval of offering an administrator contract for the 24-25 school year. The recommendation is to approve offering an administrator contract to Alan Van Hilberg as the Torrington High School principal for the 24-25 school year. Do I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Any discussion? I would just like to say um, I sat on the committee um, for hiring and it was a very, very impressive committee, a very, very impressive um, process. And um, I'm excited for him to come. I think he's going to be a huge asset to this community and to the high school. And uh, I fully realize there's some PTSD because we've had some turnover, but I think um, he's going to be a huge asset. So I'm excited for him to come. Any other discussion? All those in favor of offering an administrator contract to Al Alan Van Tilburg, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All, right. All those opposed? Any abstentions? Item carries. Letter F, consider approval of rehiring a retiree for the 2024-2025 school year. The recommendation is to approve hiring previous previous district retiree Randy Epler as a half-time district MTSS coordinator for the 24-25 school year per district policy 4302 retire rehire. Do I have a motion? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of hiring Randy Epler as a half-time NPSS coordinator for the 2024-2025 school year, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Item changes. Letter G, consider approval of contracting with Franklin Covey for district professional development services. The recommendation is to approve contracting with Franklin Covey for the Leader in Me District Professional Development Services, including materials, implementation, training, and consulting from April 15th through June 30th, 2024, and the following uh, June 1st through June 30th, 2025, and July 1st through 2025 through June 30th, 2026. In the revised total amount of $383,771.19, this is funded by WBB Stronger Connections Grant as presented for approval in the consent agenda. Do I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Yeah, I'd like to speak on this. I've talked with several people in the community um, about the diversity, equity, and inclusion. And it was brought up earlier that our State legislature uh, defunded or took away funding from the university um, to prevent them from pushing that. 
Megan Hagenfelter has also spoke against it. And uh, I believe uh, another school has withdrawn from the grant to, because of uh, uh, statements on their website. And um, I just don't see how we can fund a company. Maybe we say they don't push it in our district, but we're still funding a company that pushes it, period. Because that's what they stand for. That's what they put on the website. That's what they believe in. And um, so I guess you have to make a decision if um, where your beliefs are and uh, what morals you have. So um, I am uh, speaking against uh, approving this front or this uh, organization. I would just like to say I respect the concerns over DVI, but above that, I trust the staff in our district. I trust them enough that I give them my babies every day to teach. They are our neighbors and our friends. I believe that they hold the same values as the families in our community, and they are not pushing things on our children that this community does not support. And I would like to also echo what Mrs. Anderson said, and that I also looked up a company, a, a list of companies that have DEI stated somewhere in their company mission, and it is overwhelming. I already hate shopping at Walmart, so that one's not hard for me, but there are so many companies that already have some sort of statement reflecting DEI. And so I just think we're cutting off our noses to fight our patients and we're hurting our students if we don't support a program that could really benefit them. I second that. I mean, I just encourage everybody to be more realistic on, I mean, what are the actual implications of some of these programs at the local level with our staff and students? Um, I mean, it's like this last one, there wasn't one negative thing that any staff member would say about any of the programs. And the only thing we were afraid of is a three sentence statement on the national website. Um, and until we can find something negative about the programs that are pushed through this, into our own schools and our own students. And I think it's just a good point. And if we want to please go on witch hunt about everything we do, every every business part and almost and go look at their mission and vision statement and probably not like something about it. But I don't know. I'm just trying to be more realistic and see what are the true implications of our classroom and from that to all I heard is positive, so I'm not really scared of that mission. Any other discussion? Yeah, I'd like to speak to it as well. Um, we were challenged with spending the time educating ourselves and looking into this, and I've done exactly that. I went to Southeast and I picked up the curriculum and materials that are actually being shared with the staff that are teaching my children, okay? My kids at Southeast. I have uh, pulled up the exact website, Mr. Alexander, that you asked us to read that literally talks about kindness and compassion and the hurt associated with uh, Mr. Floyd's death. I saw absolutely no negativity there whatsoever. In my personal opinion, a school board is not a battleground for political initiatives. It's not. We have to learn as a community and this school board to set those things aside and focus on what's important to our kids. Today, I literally have a teacher who I trusted with my child who said to me today, kids are not taught basic life skills anymore at home. We are asking more and more every single day of teachers. When I have teachers sitting in this back row who have taught my kids, who is teaching one of my children right now, say to me, they need this program, they support this program, I am 100% behind that. I know for a fact that Southeast kids, teachers, parents, if they heard any of the things that are being spewed about DEI, we would hear about it. We would know about it. Trust me, folks, they're not going to sit on it. And I also trust every single one of these individuals sitting in this room to not spew those ugly things to our kids. That's what we do every day when they are allowed to teach our kids. This leader in me is helping these kids to learn these basic skills, 
that we are investing in them, in our future of the community. It's not just about what they're learning in the, in the schools right now. We're teaching them to be kind. We're teaching them to be compassionate. We are giving them actual skills that they can use to deal with some pretty hard stuff. The world is only getting harder. And if we don't approach this in school and address it in the school, it's not happening at home. That's what we're seeing. It's helping with absenteeism. It's helping with discipline issues. My daughter's in leadership in me and has nothing but positive things to say. My nephew is the same way. Very quiet kids by nature, but who are benefiting from this. If you are so concerned with what is being taught, it's right here. Come and read it. Come and look through the actual documents that the teachers are using to guide our kids through this program. I stand 100% behind this program and I stand behind these teachers that want to continue using it. I think that it is only fair to the entire district, to every single kid in the Goshen County School District to receive these teachings and not just the Southeast kids. Thank you. I'd like to say that um... I have actually read The Seven Habits. Um, I've read The Seven Habits of Humans. I've also read uh, Putting First Things First. I, I've read several of those books. Um, it's a leadership management program. Um, and I read the book years ago. And the I wasn't even a thought of that when these books first came out. Um, it's principle-centered leadership, and they're universal principles that are being um, afforded to our kids to be able to understand that they have choice in the, the decisions that they make in in their lives. Um, you know, one of the things that I guess I I do want to say about this opportunity and this this situation is, you know, I'm very thankful for for everybody's thoughts on this, because it's opportunities like this that continue to help me learn about myself and about the situation that we're in. Um, I do agree that these situations teach um, us to be able to better understand who we are and where we're coming from, character matters, and our morals. And I believe that walking out of this meeting, I can assure you that I'm going to be very confident that I'm going to be making the choice to do the best that we possibly can for our kids. Um, I'm not, with my vote, um, dividing. Um, I'm not creating. Um, I'm hoping that I am assisting in building good leaders for our future. Um, and I think that this program, and again, with the help of those that are gonna be facilitating um, the program, I trust that they're gonna do their very best for our kids as well. So I also commend you for bringing it up as a part of our district um, to continue to build leaders. So I thank you for that. So I've also read this book probably about five years ago. It's an excellent book if anybody would want to read it. Um, in addition to that, my daughter came home one day and she was talking about things, um, leadership principles. I said, where did you hear that? And she said, I got it at school. I said, hmm, that's interesting. I've heard those same things. And her only negative comment about it was I wish that more kids could be involved with it. That was the only negative comment she had to say about it. She loves the program. I think that uh, it has the potential to be a really great program for the rest of the district. And I agree with what some other board members have said this evening. So I just have one question. Southeast obviously has already been doing this and crammed it in somewhere, but we are constantly asking our teachers to do more. So how does this fit into a day when we're already getting so much time? So one of the things in, in K through five, it's a little bit different. We schedule in different ways throughout the week and how we can kind of put in, it in because that is challenging also in there. 
The other aspect that we're looking at at the high school level, uh, Mr. Williams has referenced uh, switching the periods each week on which week that has, it has the lesson provided. And so that's where we're kind of continually move throughout there. And it's an adjustment in regards to how those things are. But what we found in what you referenced is the principles that we need to be talking about, the consistency, the common language. The more that we're able to spend time on those things, the less distractions that also are taking away from that educational environment. And so that's just as important as input in those. Any other discussion? Yeah, I just <clears throat> want to make a comment that I figured we could do a better job of finding other companies like Greg or you or some other ones like that that um, would be a better fit and uh, be able to do the same job without uh, DEI uh, guidelines that they like to go by. I just want to reference um, tonight we accepted the detailed monthly board report for expenditures for Amazon, Banner Health. Comfort in Culligan Water, then your Denver Museum of Art, Hilton Garden in Holiday Inn, Jostens. Pine Cove and Walmart, Wendy's, and Travel Lodge, all of which with a quick search have DEI on the website. So I do believe that if we're going to be consistent. Let's be consistent. Otherwise, we need to read exactly what is in there, what is needed, what it is pertaining to, and like Trustee Hager referenced, the importance of the materials that we're actually looking at and seeing from our teachers. And I will attest also with um, the other statements that were made, uh, our teachers in this community are your neighbors. They have the same values. They attend the same churches. They go to the same activities. Please believe in them that they would have as many questions as you would as parents if things were in question on what we would be asking them to teach. Any other discussion? All those in favor of approving contracting with Franklin Covey for District Professional Development Services in the total amount of $383,771.19, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? Item carries. Letter H, consider approval of contracting with Wyoming Educa Educators Benefit Trust, WEP, for district health insurance coverage for the 24-25 school year. The recommendation is to approve renewing the contract with WEP for the 2024-2025 school year to provide employees with health, dental, and vision insurance. Do I have a motion? Is there a second? Love it. Any discussion? All those in favor of contracting with WEPT for district health insurance coverage for the 24 25 school year, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any er, <laughs> All those against? Any abstentions? Item carries. <clears throat> Letter I consider approval of contracting for asbestos abatement management and oversight. The recommendation is to approve contracting with Abbey Environmental Management for the asbestos abatement management, bidding and oversight for the THS Tech Ed building in the total amount of $33,894. This is funded by SFD Capital Construction. Do I have a motion? Number. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? <laughs> What's the plan? But the time frame on the abatement is going to work in conjunction with the demolition, and that um, all that will be completed before the start of school or not. Any other discussion? All those in favor of contracting with Abbey Environmental Management for asbestos abatement in the total amount of thirty-three thousand eight hundred ninety-four dollars, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Any abstentions? Item carries. Letter J, consider approval of contracting services for the demolition of THS Tech Ed building in Little House. The recommendation is to approve contracting with JEO Architecture for bidding, coordination, and construction administration services 
for the demolition of the DHS Tech Ed building and Little House in the total amount of $26,500. Um, tech Ed building funded SFD capital construction, Little House funded major maintenance security fund. Do I have a motion? Is there a second? Any discussion? Oh, Rick Narcier, unless you can just refresh my memory on the demolition plan for this, because I remember a long time ago we had this. Um, what, what we have, the Tech Ed building, the, the board held a public hearing in March of 21, and then the School Facilities Commission at their May of 20, 2021 meeting approved the, the demolition and the dollars allocated for it. The little house was um, public hearing held at the April of 2023 meeting and the school facility commission meeting of July of 2023. And they, they have funds allocated for the whole project. The, the idea or the intent, the, the tech ed building, that being the red speckle block building behind the high school approaching the soccer field. That building is fully encompassed with asbestos and there are no um, restrooms in that building. So it, it doesn't really serve a purpose. Um, at the time that we made the decision to, to demo that building, the school facilities was encouraging districts that had additional square footage to take that square footage off of our, our roles. And so that was part of the conversation with that. The um, little house, the reason why that um, is earmarked as security dollars, it's major maintenance security dollars, that um, building, the, the thought process is that it's difficult for those students um, to leave the, the actual high school and go to that to that building that they need to um, keep those students more encompassed right in the legal building. And that one has had um, issues with um, start a fire. Somebody at one time threw a cigarette and um, we had one of the window boxes catch fire. It's had flooding um, just by that the sheer nature of that building being forgotten and not being right there in the immediate footprint of the high school. Quite the second building, no, didn't. Wasn't there already a bid for that? And so do we have to get new bids? Is this what the um, is doing? We, we had not had bids for the work yet. This, what, what you're um, being asked to approve this evening is, is the architect that would um, walk through bidding the project, overseeing the project, and getting a, a contractor to actually do the work um, for both of those, both of those projects. Um, the, the first item for the abatement is the environmental hygienist who will bid the abatement work of which what, what I envision happening is the tech ed building has no asbestos in it. So at the time that the tech ed building is being demoed, the abatement contractor would abate the tech ed building. When the low house is done, the, the demo contractor can then move to the tech ed building. Isn't that at one point we put it out so that it's little hard to purchase those buildings and move them? We could, and there was no interest in that. Is that what you're thinking about the one you did? Well, I thought when we did that, when we put out the bids for it to redo the high school parking lot, that that same contract was putting a bid to do the demo on the tech end bill. I just, maybe, I just remember talking about the demolition of the tech end building at the same time as the parking lot, but maybe it well, may have. Well, and maybe about what uh, future projects would exist and what that courtyard might, would potentially look like once that building is not there, possibly, because I know that, that we've had conversations initially when that was taking place uh, about the possibilities that we could actually utilize that area as opposed to what it's being used for right now, especially in the courtyard. 
And can Sarah, you you are correct that we we did attempt to have someone purchase the the little house, but um, there was no interest. Marcy, am I to understand that the twenty six thousand five hundred dollars is just for the architect? to coordinate demolition and CA that does not include the cost of act the actual demolition? Correct. Does that require an architect? Um, the, the architect is needed um, because the, the project has to be bid. So they're gonna put the, the documents together. They're gonna oversee the project. And um, in doing that, there, there are some, I'm gonna call it white update. Um, components, whether it be paving um, and or gravel of, of the two different um, projects. And so that person is going to be there and say, yes, it's ready for that or, or no, it's not. So it, it it is in need of someone to make sure that all of the utilities are turned off and that um, nobody does anything too fast or, or incorrectly. And we actually received two different bids. The other bid was for 29,000 or something. Okay, thank you. The, the other piece with the 26,500 is that um, there's a, a not to exceed in that 26,500. So there's the potential that that one could be a, a little bit less. Correct. They, the, um, the architect will actually um, provide a recommendation for the, for the board based upon the, the demo bids that are received. So you'll have this back in front of you again for the award of the bid yep. for the actual work. Okay. So everybody understands this is just the architect piece of it. Okay. So there have been like this, 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 this building. There, there has been Abbey Environmental has been on site uh, multiple times, and they have they've tested it's the um, floor inside the building as well as the entire um, exterior being encapsulated in asbestos. That's stucco. You know, you're just causing me to have a lot of ideas. <laughs> 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 that used to be our wrestling <laughs> You'll be fine. <laughs> You'll be fine, Dylan. Yeah. You'll You're be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion? All those in favor of contracting with GAEO Architecture for bidding, coordination, construction, administration services for demolition of the DHS Tech building and Middle House in the total amount of 26500 please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Any abstentions? I didn't care. Letter K, consider approval of contracting for district concrete projects. The recommendation is to approve contracting with Mass Creek LLC for district concrete projects, including the drive lane at district track concessions, rock landscape area at TMS, rock landscape area at THS, and THS auto ad gravel parking lot in a total amount of $67,400. This is funded through the major maintenance fund. Do I have a motion? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving contracting with Mass Creek LLC for district concrete projects in the total amount of 67400 please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Item carries. Letter L, consider approval of purchase exceeding $5,000 for water softener replacement. The recommendation is to approve contracting with Colgan for a replacement water softener system at Trail Elementary in the total amount of $16,483.60. This is funded through major maintenance funds. Do I have a motion? Is there a second? Any discussion? All those in favor of approving contracting with Culligan Water for a replacement
replacement water softener system, the trail elementary, and the total amount of $16,483.60. Please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? I didn't care. Letter M, consider approval of purchase exceeding $5,000 for carpet replacement. The recommendation is to approve the purchase exceeding $5,000 for the purchase of replacement carpet in four trail elementary classrooms from Anderson Carpet in the total amount of $20,036.44. This is funded through major maintenance funds. Do I have a motion? Okay. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of purchasing carpet, replacement carpet for Trail Elementary from Anderson Carpet in the total amount of $20,036.44, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Any abstentions? I didn't hear this. Yeah, I have a question. It didn't impact my budget. So, okay. Sorry, I didn't get it earlier. Are we on a resolution schedule with the carpet? Like, do we go a certain amount of building every year? What, what has happened is that um, as we visit schools, um, schools have particular rooms that, that they see a need, and um, these are the last rooms at trail that have not been replaced. So, so really, there is kind of a little bit of Yes. Well, and, and it is dependent upon what the room's used for and, um, you know, what what type of carpet was put in there. We're, we're trying to get, we call this the district standard. Um, this carpet that's in this building is, is pretty um, sturdy carpet and, and tends to, to hold up. And it roughly is a, a rotational basis because typically we have kind of a count for some years. Um, also within trail, there has been the, where we did have at one point in time a bad batch of carpet. And so that kind of might seem like there's been on a more consistent within one building, but it was due to the product that was actually put in there. But then we were also covered because of that that product in replacing that. Okay, letter in. Consider approval of purchase exceeding five thousand dollars for the smart bus internet data renewal. The recommendation is to approve the purchase exceeding $5,000 for the renewal of 68 Khajiit Smart Bus Internet Connectivity Licenses from June 12, 2024 through September 12, 2025 in the total amount of $24,624.84. This is funded 50% through ESSER funds, 50% through Reimbursable Transportation Fund. Do I have a motion? Is there a second? Any discussion? All those in favor of uh, purchase from Kajik Smart Bus Internet con Connectivity Licenses for in the total amount of $24,624.84, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Item carries. Letter O, consider approval of building fire panel upgrades. The recommendation is to approve the purchase of an installation of nine IT cellular based devices for fire panel conversion from Nebraska Safety and Fire Equipment in the total amount of $17,377. Uh, this is funded through the General Fund Building and Maintenance. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Is there a second? Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the purchase and installation of nine IP cellular based devices um, from Nebraska Safety and Fire Equipment in the total amount of $17,377, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Any abstentions? Item pins. Letter P, consider approval of purchase exceeding $5,000 for replacement music riser stands. The recommendation is to approve the purchase of seven music risers slide rail kit and shipping from Torrington Music Programs or Torrington Music Programs from Winger in the total amount of $21,820.10. This is funded by Lincoln Trail TMS uh, THS General Building Funds. Do I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? So those are the stands that the kids go on or that for top row, middle row, bottom row. Okay. 
Any other discussions? All those in favor of purchasing seven, purchasing seven music risers, slide drop kit, and kippings uh, from Winger and the total amount of $21,820.10, please signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Any abstentions? Item carries. Letter Q, consider approval of purchase exceeding $5,000 for THS Family Consumer Science Kitchen Equipment. The recommendation is to approve the purchase of various kitchen equipment items listed in the memo for THS from Catom Restaurant Supply in the total amount of $9,800.30. This is funded through the Cutting Edge Grant. Do I have a motion? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of purchasing various kitchen equipment items through the Tom Restaurant Supply in the total amount of $9,800.30, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Any abstentions? Item carries. Letter R is consider approval of purchase exceeding $5,000 for the purchase of Orton Billingham supplies. The recommendation is to approve the purchase of Orton Billingham supplies for tra Trail Elementary from Amazon in the total amount of $7,742.49. This is funded through Trail, trail Title I funds. Do I have a motion? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of Purchasing Orton Gillingham supplies for Trail Elementary from Amazon in the total amount of $7,742.49. Please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Any abstentions? Item carries. Letter S. Consider approval of purchase exceeding $5,000 for Trail Library books. The recommendation is to approve the purchase of library books from Amazon in the total amount of $10,205.93. This is funded through Trail Title I funds. Do I have a motion? Second. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the purchase of library books from Amazon in the amount of $10,205.93, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Item carries. Number four, topics for discussion. And this is the time for board members to seek input from each other on timely topics. And I actually have something for this evening, real quick. Um, I'm going to read a letter that Goshen County School Board will be submitting to Carbon County School Board. So, um, on March 4th, 2024, trustees for Goshen County School District received an email from Denver Allard with a variety of allegations regarding the misconduct of our superintendent, Ryan Tramber. While in attendance at the 3A Regional Basketball Tournament that was hosted in Rollins, following this email, an informal investigation was conducted, which included the review of video surveillance from the event, as well as first-hand accounts of the incidents in question. Trustees reviewed all evidence presented and unanimously found that our superintendent acted within the parameters of his position and with reason regarding the situation. We stand with Mr. Kramer and support his actions as a reflection of his desire to safeguard the well-being of our student athletes during a state sanctioned sporting event. In light of these allegations and various first-hand accounts relating to interactions between Rollins and Torrington, not just at this year's regional basketball tournament, but inclusive of numerous other incidents, our board is hopeful that moving forward, our, all parties will work to mend relationships while keeping the safety and well-being of our students and athletes at the forefront of any and all decisions and actions that are made, we appreciate being made aware of this situation and hope that respectful caution is used in the future when making accusations that have extremely serious implications regarding the career of a highly respected educator and administrator. Anybody else have any topics for discussion? Mr. Chairman, um, I do, and it's on that same topic. Um, to be very honest with you, I've really, really struggled with this and whether or not I even say anything um, to this board. 
but um, I'm very disturbed by something that has occurred and was brought to my attention by a community member. I understand that an email pertaining to this very sensitive subject um, was printed and circulated amongst the community. In fact, it was sent by a board member to a former board member who then took it to a bank and printed it off and planted it down for the community to read. There are specifically laws to protect someone from branding another human being with baseless accusations and allegations. The purpose of internal investigations of personnel matters is that they are very sensitive and it's not fair to release that information to those that are not sitting on the board when we are discussing it and considering it. That information was released, in my opinion, for no other purpose other than to drag Mr. Kramer's name through the mud. This particular action has destroyed my trust in you, Mr. Alexander, for releasing this email. Um, it's disheartening, it's appalling. We work very hard as this board. We spend a lot of time, a lot of time trying to do what's best for this district. So when something like that happens, um, it's very, very discouraging and disappointing. And I think it's important for this board to know that that has occurred. I don't know if this is the first time. I'm hopeful it's the last. Um, but I also think it's important for the community to know that these types of things are occurring. And I'm just very, very discouraged by it. Um, as Mr. Sussex read the letter that we will be sending to Carbon County, we stand behind Mr. Kramer and his actions at regional basketball, and that he was protecting our kids from an incident that should not have occurred. And it's just very, very disappointing that this information was shared with the community in the manner in which it was shared. So, thank you. Um, I would like to, I would like to ask if, if it's appropriate to we find out first, um, we break to break the subject. Yeah. Question number two. Um, hey, I need a motion to adjourn to do executive session. Is there a second? A second. All those in favor of adjourning into executive session, please signify by saying aye. Aye.
Okay. Are there any other topics for discussion for the board this evening before we move on? Okay. Uh, letter F is our future meetings. There will be a special meeting on Thursday, April 18th, to conduct a session for salary relations information. Uh, the meeting time is to be determined. Can we get that time set? Yes, so let's do that. If we've had we've had a work session for the past on 6, 6.37, what would be the availability of board members in relation to that to those times? Preferences. Okay. Other preferences are unable to make. I know that's a tight window for you, Trustee Cushman. Sometimes I'm getting off for that, and I don't want to put you in a tough position. Okay. All right. This is for salary relations. This is the work session for salary relations information. So it's not going to be like a typical six hour salary relations committee meeting. That's Just curious. Monday. Just That's curious at the start time. Yes, no, this is this is just information shared uh, by Marcy relating to the budget work okay. and going and items related to going into salary relations. Okay. Little, little gun shy. <laughs> typically, I believe this has lasted about an hour. I, I would say an hour, an hour and a half. It really is going to depend upon the questions and the interaction from the people. Is that even for the poll? Oh, yep. What time is the yeah. about see right now? Six. Seven. So maybe seven. Yeah. All right. Uh -huh. Seven o'clock. Yeah. That was good. Seven You're going to make us do bingo for books first and then. My teachers are starting to not. I have a sixth grade meeting about Yellowstone at 5 30 that night. So seven o'clock it is. <laughs> okay. So number two, um, salary relations committee will be meeting on Monday, April 22nd at 8 a.m. And that's the long. So that's the one. That's the six, seven hour. Okay. Um, there will be a special board meeting on Tuesday, April 30th, uh, to consider the 24-25 salary and benefit proposal from the Salary Relations Committee. Uh, the meeting times to be determined for that too. Six o'clock, do I hear for that one? That That is a, usually another hour one that doesn't take uh, a large amount of time. But if there's other events that you have at school, we don't have any more bingo for books or anything like that that I need to be doing. Okay. That's the junior high track meet in Morrill. <laughs> six o'clock or six thirty. When do you think it's going to be done? I, I, I'm hoping do their, it'll be done by six. Okay, six <laughs> Remember when everybody was like, join the school board. It's one one meeting a month. <laughs> 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 they did. They did. I'm telling you. It was in the fine print. I I didn't read it. Number four, the next regular board meeting will be Tuesday, May 14th at 7 p.m. Uh, and included in that board meeting will be the annual recognition of our district retirees and years of service and the scholarship presentations for the 2023 student representatives to the board. Um, typically, in the past, we've had three board members, uh, each one funded a scholarship. Uh, is there any interest? I've done one every year, and I think Matthew did one, Sarah's done one. Any interest in any other board members in funding a scholarship for our student reps from? Sure. Okay. Okay. So bring your checkbook. No. <laughs> and with that, we will go to our superintendent's report. So the document I'm sharing right now on more just deals with our openings that we currently have. Um, we still have the ones that are remaining from the previous year of speech pathologists and school psychologists. Also, our transfers that we've had within the district for um, various positions from current ones, those are identified in purple there. Then we also have our new hires that were approved this evening. And then we will have, because we had some resignations this evening, some more openings that we will fill. The classified staff, we do have some resignations, but we typically do not fill those. We post them in June, 
come to you in July with the idea that in August, then we have them start classified locations. Then the next document that I wanted to share with you is our All right, and then this, again, we have our enrollment. Green signifies that you stay the same or improved from the previous month. Uh, so you'll see that we have a few yellows. This is the, again, the average daily membership. This is encompassing uh, the number of students and then also the number of seats and attendance. So it is quantified and directly related to our funding. For the year, you can see from this time last month, we are slightly down from 1,608 to 1,597. But still ahead of previous years, uh, outside of last year's, which we did increase uh, significantly. Also, I want to point out to you on page 136 of your packet, this there have been changes uh, in the public officer's training and I just want to point out the opportunities that you have in regards to these. This does need to be completed by July 1. Uh, so you can see on page 136, uh, the various times in which this is a this has been significantly reduced from where it was previous. Um, Max, did you attend one of the longer ones? Is that so? No, I had the opportunity through the fire board to attend one. Um, and it, yeah, it was like an all day thing. Yes. There's talk that at some point it's going to be all digital and you don't have to do that, but I don't know. So, yes, no, I did not attend. But this, they reduced it from an all day now to a three and a half hour. Um, and, and I think Wyoming School Board Association, in conjunction uh, with the Department of Audit, worked on something that was very specifically tailored. For board members, it's for school board member, board members in particular, where the previous trainings were not at all uh, related to many topics that school board members would take. So this would be again uh, attended before July one. Not because I'm considering it, but what happens if you don't? But you and many other people have <laughs> asked that on Zooms. That has yet to be determined. I do believe they extend your time on school boards in Goshen County if you don't. It's, uh, we figure out a way to, to get it done. So that's, that's the way it works. <laughs> you become a liability. Yeah, that was very, yeah, that, that was very <laughs> tongue in cheek. I hope that yeah. I did that. Right? Um, the next piece district graduations. Uh, time to get ready for those Sunday, May 19th. Um, please let me know which ones you plan to attend uh, so we can add appropriate uh, chairs and carnations for you uh, for your attendance of those. Um, I'm pretty sure I can guess Trustee Hager is going to attend the uh, THS, and I, I'm sure there's another <laughs> parent who will be attending the Southeast one. But um, also, we did this in order to not all board members feel that they have to attend multiple graduations, especially uh, when one of your children is graduating. It is certainly understandable for you to attend only one of those graduation ceremonies. Um, one that was not listed is PRS May 15th at 5 p.m. Uh, that will take place up at EWC in that honor plan. And if you could let me know also, because it is as we lay out chairs in the order of those, if you could for sure make me aware if you plan to attend those. Five o'clock for PRS on May 15th. Mr. Kramer, I will be at the Southeast graduation, but please don't make me sit up in front of everybody because I will be a blubbering mess. So- You have to award the diploma. Do I? I literally am. I'm gonna have to have therapy. I know. Everybody <laughs> asked me. I cried on the graduation. So I don't uh, know. I still have to go up there and. Okay. All right. I well, I appreciate it's the heads up. up. <laughs> it's something you have to do, and it's very, very difficult. I, I, it will be hard. <laughs>
In fact, I would love if Mr. Williams could find a reason to hold her back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Okay, there's nothing else to come before the board. We are 